What is going on, Jeff fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video, and the dust has settled. I don't feel any better. I'm sure you don't feel any better either, and honestly, a perfect day to put this shirt on. Always loyal, because Jeff fans are the absolute most loyal people for really no good reason um, at all, really, but it, it, it's just it's unbelievable. So what I wanted to do today was go through what I think are the best quarterback options for the New York Jets. Right now, they are going to continue to run with Zach Wilson, and they said Zach was going to start the rest of the way. I think that's kind of coach speak. I don't necessarily believe that, but I don't think we could possibly long-term, for the re long -term meaning for the rest of the year, live with a Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle quarterback room. I think you need to add a veteran. So I have free agent option, potential trade options, We'll go through, we'll talk about him. I'm going to warn you, it's not a pretty list. It, it really isn't. None of these guys are going to do remotely close to what Aaron Rodgers was you know, projected to do with this team. But let's talk through some of these options for the New York Jets. For, and this is in no particular order, by the way. I just wanted to mention that. It's not in particular order, but just guys that I wanted to go through. First one on the list is Jacoby Brissett. He is with the Washington Commanders. Uh, he started 11 games last year for the Cleveland Browns and looked honestly pretty good in those 11 games. He had a 64.1 completion percentage, 2,608 yards, 12 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, a 7.1 yards per attempt, an 81, uh, 89 excuse me, .1 rating. 17-game uh, pace, that's a 4,000-yard, 19-touchdown, 9-interception season. That is, if you look up game manager in a dictionary, that is the exact kind of production you are going to see. And I think you would take that for, you know, the rest of this team. Is he going to elevate you to win a Super Bowl? No. Can he help you get 9, maybe 10 wins if things break right? Yeah, probably with how good this defense is. Yeah. Absolutely, I think he could. Uh, in 2019, he started 15 games, threw for like 196 yards a game, an 88 rating, 18 touchdowns, six interceptions. He is not going to take many chances. He's not going to turn the ball over. He is a very, very safe option. If you want the safe route, this would be the guy to go. We'll talk about more of the high-variance guys in a little bit. Jacoby Brissett, I would list as a safe player if you want the game manager type another kind of one of those options is colt mccoy who is a free agent the arizona cardinals moved on from him uh, on the eve of the season he's been a career backup for pretty much outside of his first two seasons in the league high completion percentage guy could be a game manager not necessarily as good as jacoby Brissett though in his three starts last year he had a couple okay ones and then like one not so great one uh, he had a 70.3 completion percentage, 238 yards, one touchdown, and a 96.5 rating in his first start. Second start, 70.1 completion percentage, 218 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. Next start was 61.9, 78 yards, no touchdown, and a pick. So kind of like started out hot and then got a little bit worse as you go. Cole McCoy, good backup quarterback, probably an okay spot starter. I don't know how much he's really moving the needle forward. Not a great option, but... He's available, and it's not going to cost you a draft pick to trade for him. Next up is Jameis Winston of the New Orleans Saints. He had three starts in 2022. He threw for 286 yards per game in those starts, which is, that's good, obviously. Four touchdowns, five interceptions. This is the problem with Jameis Winston. He is your high-variance player. There are some really nice, really high shining moments, and then they are absolutely horrible horrific moments and he turns the ball over a ton he famously had a 30 interception season 30 touchdowns 30 interceptions it was insane he was a, a turnover machine he couldn't he throw go out there and throw you 5,000 yards in a season 4,000 yards in a season absolutely if he started every game the rest of the year for the New York Jets there's no doubt in my mind he would hit 4,000 yards as a passer he would also probably hit 20 interceptions in a season the only time where he really cut down on turnovers was with Sean Payton in 2021 he started seven games 14 touchdowns three interceptions uh with all due respect to Nathaniel Hackett who I was excited to bring in and pair with Aaron Rodgers He's not Sean Payton. Uh, he is not a, a Sean Payton type of offensive mind. So I don't necessarily see that as a repeat option of him coming in and limiting turnovers. I think if you were to bring him in, 
there's going to be some really nice moments and probably some good games, and there's going to be some real rough ones mixed in. That kind of goes to say with Gardner Minshew also of the Indianapolis Colts. This I'm kind of going to give you a batch of three high-variance guys uh, in a row. So in 2022, he started two games for the Philadelphia Eagles. First one, 24 of 40 for 355 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Next game, 18 at 32, 274, a touchdown and an interception. He was relatively serviceable as a starter for the Jacksonville Jaguars from 2018 through 2020. Of the high variance guys, this is probably my favorite high variance option. Um, he again, he has some starting experiences, had some really nice flashes, is a fun player, easy to root for. Um, not that Jameis isn't fun. He he is. I would classify him as a, a a fun player as well. I just think Gardner's had a little bit more success and less injury concern than someone like Jameis Winston. Again, none of these options are fantastic, um, but potentially maybe you could go get Gardner Minshew uh, from the Indianapolis Colts. Carson Wentz is a free agent. No, thank you. I, I don't want Carson Wentz. If this was pre-2019 2019 or before, yes, absolutely, I would sign up for Carson Wentz. But he has been a turnover machine pretty much since 2020, the last three years. He had nine interceptions and seven starts last season. He had a horrific, horrific implosion in a win-in in game for the Indianapolis Colts in 2021. And 2020 was just absolutely broken, and the Eagles moved on with him after giving him a massive, massive contract. Uh, I, I don't think Carson Wentz is the answer um, again 2019 or earlier pretty big fan of Carson Wentz's game for whatever reason I don't think he has handled falling out of favor in Philadelphia and then making one year stops in each of his last two places in Indianapolis and Washington I think there's a reason why it was one and done in each of those starts I, I don't know if you want to say it's a locker room issue or whatever the case is I just don't think that you can pivot to him and, and, and claim like, oh, yeah, we're all in about bringing in guys, you know, good apples, get the bad apples out of here and be like, ah, Carson Wentz, let's bring him in. I don't think this is the best option. Again, of the three high variance guys, I would say Gardner Minshew would be my favorite of that bunch. Okay, I have two more options before I get into just some rapid fire takes on some other names that I know are going to come up. Uh, Cooper Rush of the Dallas Cowboys. So the Cowboys just traded for Trey Lance as a developmental backup. Would they be okay with moving on from uh, Cooper Rush? He had five starts last year and looked okay in a couple of them. 58% completion percentage, 191 yards per game, five touchdowns, three picks, and 81.2 rating. His first three starts were really, really good. Final two, eh, so-so. He had wins over the Bengals, the Giants, and Washington in those first three starts. He is someone who I think could come in and play and be, again, kind of in that game manager role. Um, I, I think Dallas likes Cooper Rush, but at the same time, like, why are you trading for Trey Lance then if you really like him that much? Uh, and Trey Lance did come in and get some action against the New York Giants in the blowout. The Jets play the Cowboys this week. I don't think it's going to be something that happens, like, immediately. Maybe it does, but um, I think Cooper Rush would be someone that I think is at least worthwhile to keep an eye on. Uh, then the last guy is Teddy Bridgewater, who is currently the Lions backup quarterback. He had a 62% completion percentage last year, four touchdowns, four picks in four plus game. He's he technically started or played in five, but uh, it was one snap and Sauce Gardner knocked him out of that game in the one snap five. Um, sorry. He had 683 yards in those games, which is about 170 yards per game. Again, it's a rough estimate because uh, I'm kind of taking out that fifth one because he didn't really play. So in, in four games, if you were to pace that out over four games, that's um, a, a 170 yards per game. He was a serviceable starter for both Denver and Carolina in 2020 and 2021. This is, again, game manager role. He's not going to go out there and make a ton of plays. He'll throw for 3,400 yards in a season. 17 touchdowns, eight interceptions, something like that. Uh, give you a relatively, again, serviceable completion percentage. He's fine. He's absolutely fine um, as a backup. And I think is probably like the last guy that I would potentially target. And just some rapid fire names like Tom Brady's going to get brought up unrealistic. I don't think that is on the table. Would it be fun? One last ride? Sure. But do you really go to New England 
Uh, and then the next week sign with the Jets and come right back in. I don't think so. I don't think that's happening. Joe Flacco, bite me. He did, He says he wants to play this year. He didn't act like it real, last year at all. Pass. Matt Ryan, no. He was absolutely atrocious last year with Indianapolis. I think he's cooked. Andy Dalton, yes, but I don't think Carolina would trade him. I think they want to keep him there with their young quarterback. I like Tyrod Taylor with the Giants, but I don't think they're going to want to move on. Uh, from Daniel Jones, uh, from him because of Daniel Jones's past injury concerns. Um, so while I would be p- p- potentially interested there, I don't see a deal being striked there. So um, yeah, again, options not fantastic. This is depressing. Um, maybe they would just ride it out with Zach Wilson. Even if that's the case, if they are going to start Zach Wilson the rest of the way, I think they should bring in another veteran quarterback because I don't want to see a Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle quarterback room. I think you have to add more there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.